Well, good afternoon, folks, or evening, depending on what time you're watching this, but we're glad that you're with us. And Pastor Bill Muir and I, Bobby Bob, are here to have a candid conversation. Why'd you leave Bob, Pastor Bobby off? You. Ooh, that's Ooh. Freudian, right? But, yeah, yeah. You're going somewhere with that. <laughs> it's okay, you can keep going. But it is funny that you left that off, because uh, you normally put it on. Elder Bobby Bob. There you go, okay here to talk about the weekend message and uh, it's always the deep dive or at least uh, we pray that you find a nugget um, maybe you didn't get it in the the course of the teaching but by asking the questions by responding we're hoping that uh, it makes us all think and um, and get behind uh, a little bit deeper into what we're we're trying to communicate so bill uh, monumental task and i think that uh, you and i chatted very briefly last night that in the area of where, where Paul, the Lord, is instructing us uh, is about the new heart. It's about the development of, of the heart. And so Paul is addressing the things not to do, but he's also addressing the things to do. And so here's where you went uh, last night and today. You said it's not about the list, but why does Paul so often in the epistles in particular, have a list of things. You used to be this way, or don't do these things, or do these things. Why do you think he goes there? And, and um, because you said it's not about that list, right? But he gives it to us. What's going on there? Uh, for me, it's two things. I I think it's the the whole discussion in scripture. Is it prescriptive or descriptive? That is in Acts. Is it how the church should be run or just simply a description of how it was run in the first century? Okay. I think in his list, I don't think, I would not take his list as a rigid list. I think he's pulling examples okay. of issues either he's aware of or in his missionary journeys he saw in churches. So, okay. And I don't think it's all inclusive list. I don't think he's saying these are the only, because if you look at it, right. Colossians, there's a lot of, 1 Corinthians 13 in it, oh boy. but not all 1 Corinthians nope. 13. Nope. So I think he's just trying to illustrate uh, the particulars yeah. and, and give people tangible, measurable mm. ways. So rather than I do this to become good, I think what he's saying is good people do this. Okay. That's the difference in the heart conversation. Because we can focus on the things to do where you're going is like with the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz. Give me that heart. I want the heart. So for the believer, what is the transformation of the heart to where I'm not now doing the list, but I'm being the list, if you would. Does, no, it's, does that it's, make sense? Yeah, and, and the truth is I don't know. I'm still trying to discover it. I, I think here's how Dallas Willard says it in the renovation of the heart. Yeah. Dallas Willard says it is not so much a to-do list okay. um, or a how-to list. Okay. What the renovation of the heart comes down to is seeking God with all our heart, our soul, our core, and in that pursuit of seeking Him, mm. we will find Him. So Dallas even moves away from the list concept, like don't do these seven and then find God seek God and out of your seeking him you'll find him he will reveal at himself. every step it's not like right. okay now you found found me no right. it's, he's with so, us so all of the things that we've been talking about for the last couple of months uh, of of transformation uh, stillness be still and know that I'm God mm. uh, examine where was God in my life today where wasn't he practicing his presence um, is he present with me all day long? And when I lose sight of him, why did I? And why did I get so worried mm. or busy? Uh, meditation, dwelling. Mm. So I think it comes out of that, mm. those disciplines, mm -hmm. as much as anything. But I, I did like what I read Dallas Willard said. Is he said, you, you don't find God at the end of a, my words. You don't find God at the end of a to-do list. You seek him with your heart and as much as your heart, the pure in heart will see him. Okay, and you said something earlier uh, in this response that <clears throat> in the seeking we find him. What does it mean to find him? Can you define that for us? Because that sounds like a, uh, that's a fair. glorious word. No, it's a fair question. I, I think, um, let's say experiencing him. Okay. 
a, a bad word would be discovering him. So let's go to the experience. Know that knowledge in Colossians 3 is experiential. Mm. It's not just head knowledge. It's mm. not more knowledge. Mm. It's a knowledge of a man with his wife. The it's, new, yeah, the new self, which he says to put on, is being renewed in knowledge. And the kind of, of knowledge, creator. yes. And the well, here's what's interesting. It's, super, here's, here's it, it's a it, little intimate. Is what you're it saying? Is, it's, it is. It's intimate. not a surface. Here's what's interesting, which <clears throat> I loved, is when he talks about God in that verse, the way you stated it. <clears throat> he's really dealing with the issue of false teachers in Col Colossians one and two. Mm. that have minimized Jesus. Mm. So he does, in, in chapter three, he's doing two things simultaneously. He's elevating Jesus because the false teachers are minimizing okay. Jesus, and right. he's elevating our identity in Christ in the one who, in Colossians 1, created the world. Mm. That same one is who we have our identity in. So the Judaizers, the false teachers came in and they minimized who Jesus was. Okay and therefore minimize the people themselves. And, and Paul does this, Jesus is this, and our identity in this, Jesus is elevates us to this. A little bit of a power play. Put them down so they can, make, okay. Yeah. Do you think they were losing a little bit of their, their power uh, status because of what was happening with the believers? What was going on there? I think they were trying, Either they were wrong in their understanding who Jesus was, okay. or they were about power and trying to get the church to move away from. I mean, they, you know, you know, Colossians one and two, they were moving them more into angels, yeah. and, and uh, there was an inferiority rather than the superiority of mm -hmm, Jesus going mm -hmm. on. So that was what the false teachers were doing, okay. yep. which I would think is important for any church. Any time a church minimizes who Jesus is in his superiority, mm -hmm. beware. And then our identity is in the very one who created the world is the very one I'm in. Right. That's that's how I see it developing. So in my notes, yeah, I was I was just asking myself, um, and I have to make sure that I I have this thought kind of solidified. But it seems that uh, the evidence of our salvation would come in the fact that okay. I see Bob getting rid of things. It's not that I've gotten rid of all of them, one, one and done, or right. some things are just, yeah, those are dead. Still working on these. But there's a progression of the death process and the getting rid of process. Would you say that? That the salvation is the evidence of change? Yes, okay. keep going. Second thing would be that Bob, his little world, is becoming more like Jesus' world. Okay. And how I see people is how he sees them. And so there's a transformation there as well. The sin nature is being put to death, put to death, put to death. You see evidence of a different behavior, but also that in finding Jesus and being with him and being renewed in that knowledge, that now I'm loving people more. Would you say that that is yeah. where this passage let me, is going? For fun, let me, let me ask you a trick question. Oh boy. In chapter, in verse 10, you just said, you remember how you said it started? Being renewed in the knowledge. Well, no, put on. Oh, mm -hmm. How did you say it? Putting on the new self. Right. It's not that. You have, past tense, put on the new self. Right, since big you truth. have put on the new yeah. self. So the right. big truth is... You put to death the old self it's, and it's happened. put on the new So in path. the economy of God, which is why C.S. Lewis says It's growing in that new creationness then. Yeah, there, there is a growth to it. Sanctification is the yeah. setting apart. Yeah. But he wants us to know it's we are new. We right. are finished. We are whole. We are him. We are hidden. We are at the right hand of the Father right now. Big difference. Big difference. So there's the, excuse me, there's the crunch on something. So you, what we're saying is that there is some one and doneness to our salvation. It's locked in, it's solid. Right. But now is the Right, theologians call it already, not yet. Yeah, there you go. But it's a, I mean, it's a, it, but I think what Paul is driving at is that we are to live up to what we are. We're not to live up to create what we should be. 
Okay. That's and I and I'm confused by it because part of me goes, what, what is this a pep talk? You know, is he pretending that we're something that we're really not to get us to be what we should be, yeah. or does he really? And I think he sees us new. We have put on the mm. new self. That's happened, mm -hmm. and now because it's happened, yeah. Now we have the freedom to participate with God right. in the renewing, renovation, C.S. Lewis, the remodeling of our soul, yeah. because he's in the process of bringing it. Some people would, would say that our hearts are new, but our bodies are old. <laughs> and and, the, and what is at stake is the, the, the battle between an old body that has bad habits, that hasn't been Attached to the that, sin nature. That there's no resurrection yet of the body. There yeah. will be, yeah. which is why when we're resurrected, we'll be different. Yeah. Because our body won't be at war with our soul. Yeah. So what, what a glorious day that will yeah. be. Yeah. So what Paul's saying is your core is good. Right. Now. So we can catch glimpses. We can live in that reality, though, where the sin nature is minimized by a, a, a cooperation, a submission, a... Um, uh, connection with the Holy Spirit working in us, mm -hmm. and uh, when we do that, that's a good day. There's less of us in the equation, less of self, yeah, and more about Jesus. So we we are catching these wonderful, beautiful transformation moments, and that should be what alarms us in a good way. That oh my word, I normally would have done this or said that. <clears throat> What is the greatest litmus test, would you say, Bill, of your whole message that would say, you know what, um, what that passage is talking about is evidenced by this one thing? What would that be? Love. Right. Okay. So then you did give us some practicals today, not so much last night, but today you did. You know, you could do this, which I thought was great because it put some wheels to it, the simplicity. Why is it so hard being a new creation, Holy Spirit in us, for us to, to love? Because I don't think we know who we are. So it's always going to be identity. Always. So I talk to people all the time that don't mm. want to shake hands because they see themselves... Um, unworthy? Could be unworthy, inferior, unskilled. Mm unable mm. and i think paul is attempting to put all that aside and say don't don't because you frame yourself that way you will live wrongly if you mm. frame yourself mm. properly you will live rightly so if i i here here's the truth if i said to people if jesus said to people this morning when they're still in bed getting out here's what i want you to do today every person you see i want you to smile at mm. That's your assignment. Mm. And they heard that. Do you think they'd do it? I think we would attempt to do it. I think, we uh, we I, might lose sight of it, but I, I think that most of us would say, it, you know what, be, I need to do that. Well, and who cares what you think? He told me to. Exactly. Okay. So then it's obedience. <laughs> or identity. The, the Lord well, has called me to be his spokesman, he, be his lover, be his hands. I can do no less because he asked me to, I will. I think when we come to church, we kind of go, I'm not a deacon, I'm not an elder, I'm not spiritual, I don't have a name tag, um, I, I'm not worthy, I'm not articulate, nobody wants to know me. And, and, and for somebody to come here and say, because of who I am in Christ, I have the freedom. Do you think that we forget for sure. the reason for the hope that lies within us? And that the fruit of the Spirit is. So in other words, the, the Spirit in us which is why I think Paul is constantly driving us to our identity mm -hmm. in Ephesians and mm -hmm. Colossians. We'll mm -hmm. get back to Ephesians. I think, I think the evil one continues to take our identity away from us, and that's where the victory is. We think it's over, well, I shouldn't have done, I did, I'm greedy. You know, we, we, we go into that room. Shame and, and guilt. And I think that's not his, I don't think that's his, I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion that's not where his battle with us is. I think his battle with us is um, to remind us what we're not. 
as opposed to who we are. I ah, got it. Yeah. There's so many markers in this world, uh, you know, our behaviors and the feedback that we get to our behavior that really tears us down. And then we judge ourselves and we let others judge us as well. Now, which is another thing that you said that in the church, it should drive us to Christ and we should see Christ magnified in our existence. You said within the church, uh, you said uh, here, would you say that it should extend out to non-believers, not just to people within the church? Oh, for sure. So that would be like... But our, our, our identity as a group is in Christ. Yeah. That's where the collective is. Yes. And whether we're with a lost neighbor or in the auditorium, yeah. while I'm not united with my lost neighbor, I am united with my brothers and sisters at the church, but I treat them both equally. Okay. I love them both. Okay, so... What cracks that nut, Bill? Because, I mean, I think you could teach on this a bunch more, but so how does how does our body, how does the church, Big C Church, act in community and act in love? I mean, what? because you're talking about isolationism, you know, just that individuality, uh, private worldness, um, all of those things. What cracks that nut? I mean, how does, what's going to overcome that? Because we talk about that actually quite a bit. No, it's a, it's a great question. I think why it's difficult, it's, it's a cultural issue. It's not an intellectual issue. <laughs> it's not just, okay. it, it's the water we swim in. Okay. We swim in individuality, pioneer, American spirit, brave enough, take mm. care of yourself, mm. pull yourself up by your own shoe straps, mm -hmm. shoe straps. And everything we've been taught, I've been taught, is about me and you're the master of your soul and and where you go is going to depend upon what you do, how you think, what you study, what seminars you go to, what people you have as your friends, and it's all about you. And and I think the culture is so indated by that. Now, now add to that self-absorbed. Yeah. Add to that um, false uh, views of life. You know, entitlement, territorial, tribe. Labeling. I mean, we're walking into a world that's more tribal. You know, I mean, politically more tribal than it's yeah, ever been. Right. We identify people yeah. by the color of their skin, right. by their not just their economic. And we have to. What Paul is saying is, we have to go beyond that and not allow that. That uh, whether you call it wokeness mm. or political think or culture, you have to fight that and the question is and I don't have an answer well because people struggle with the answer is how do you change culture yeah. even in the church yeah because yeah I, right, exactly so today there yeah. was an expression of who we are by what we wear right by what we drive yeah um, I've got this little logo and there are certain guys that wear this on and I go oh that guy is probably a bow hunter you know right. or whatever yeah. right there's this identification. It's almost like a tribal thing. Uh, by what you drive, people say, oh, you know, it's kind of like that profiling yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So within the body of Christ, uh, we should not see those things because those things can divide. Yeah, I wouldn't go that radical. I would say I, what I want is everybody, uh, what I think God wants is for us to first see everyone in Christ and Christ in everyone. Now, yeah. you're a hunter, you have friends that are hunter, I would mm. slow you down, I'd fall and trip, I would scare off the moose, you don't want to take me hunting with you, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when you don't, if you were not to talk to people because they're not hunters, right. or they didn't have the vest that's on, that's the problem. That's the problem. Exactly. So, Or here, there's a difference between affinity groups and identity groups. Okay, let's, let's say uh, affinity is things I like to do. So yeah. I, I don't like to bowl, so don't invite me bowling. I yeah. like to golf, invite me golfing. That's an affinity group. Identity group is I am a golfer, and you're not. Right. That would be more identity than affinity. Or let's go golf, and I and I'll help you find your ball, and you can help me find my arrow. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think Christ is constantly calling us back to Himself. What are the biggest things that you find? What, what are the biggest struggles for you on, on with the community? 
You do that home. No, real easy. I'll go. I'll go because I thought about this tonight, today. You know, uh, energy. How much energy do I have? If I, how many friends can I afford to have? Every time I have a friend, I create more work for me when that friend's life doesn't work or he needs to move or needs to talk. So uh, energy question, gets yeah. in the way yeah. of my life where I kind of go, I mean, I literally go, I don't think I can do more. And so, so I start to step back. Okay, That so would as, be one of a hundred. Okay, so as a pastor, I mean, yeah. you could say, well, I, we have a lot of community. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of people's lives throughout the week. Right. That's, that's kind of related as your role, if you would, as a pastor. But <clears throat> where does Bill have community that is, like, that is there no matter what? It's right. not shifting. It is, it's rock solid. Do you have that? What does that look like? How do you engage in that? And, yeah. Well, community at its root is common. Okay. So what do I have in uh, so the my community so probably tend to be with those people I have the most common with. Okay. Um, and so how do I create commonality? Time, mm -hmm. sharing, information, life. Yeah. So I'm going to people get to know Bill. Yeah, and Bill gets to know them, and then yeah. that's a form. I mean, I think there are multiple layers we go through in this yeah. kind of hierarchy of intimacy. Mm. And so there's time becomes a part of it. Knowledge becomes a part of it. Vulnerability becomes a part of it. Confession becomes a part of it. You know, it, and, and the higher I go in that hierarchy of revealing and, and support, probably the more common and connected I am to those people. As a pastor, is it difficult to have that kind of community around you? I, I know I, I feel bad. I know I can't have it with everybody. Okay. I, I tried to, it doesn't work out well. I mean, just you're, 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 real, you're a, an inch deep and a mile wide. And, and so um, I make sure that I have a group of people in my life that we have a common desire to equip one another in love, to encourage each other in love, to speak truth into each other in love. Um, to ex express grace in love. Hmm. So I, I had a friend coming here uh, a couple days ago on the phone, brilliant guy, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, I should say, PhD. Um, and he mentioned to me he was just, he was struggling with discouragement. Mm. And, 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 and the funny part of my conversation with him at first, I, I found myself thinking sadly, you know, you're 75 years old and you got a PhD. Why are you discouraged? You know, um, and and in community, we allow each other to know that we'll never get perfect. We never arrive. That mm. emotions are real. Uh, they come and go. Life brings tragedy, um, and therefore we hold each other up all the way to the very end, and not think that there's this journey to the top of the hill that when I get there I'm stronger for some of us will be limping to the top how do you think we're doing at Table Rock with creating space opportunity availability for community to happen great question I ask it all the time I think our life groups are brilliant our Bible studies are brilliant our book studies are brilliant I think we're moving into discipleship which is brilliant I think there's amazing ministry that happens every day that we don't hear. I, I think where we fail, and I don't know how to do this, so I, uh, where we fail is what weekend services should look like as a body. Um, should we stop in the middle of a service and give people permission to pray in small groups? Should we should we allow people to engage each other? Because if you look at our service, it's pretty it's pretty airtight. You know, you get in there, we have a song, you have an announcement, you have another four songs, you have a sermon, you leave, you have communion, and you leave. And I, so I don't know for those who are not involved in life groups and book studies and Bible studies and think of church as weekend, yeah. that we're, hmm. that I think there's more we can do, but I don't know what it is to say to them, there's more to it than this hour and a half. 
And, I, and I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I mean, part of me has thought it to take the, I mean, you know this, take the North Campus and do a, do a different sort of a service where people come knowing they're going to be asked to do things they would, they would not want to do in a service. Yeah, see, here's where, I mean, I'm, I'm just listening to you. And <laughs> <laughs> your, your head is full of, your face is full of pain. What's the pain? I don't know that the, the power or the impact, uh, as much as we can teach it, preach it, um, do announcements, have the dancing elephant on the stage, or the uh, prancing pony to right. say, do this, do that, is as powerful as the, hey Bill, you know, I'm, we're going up to the, the desert um, for a weekend, man, just you know, bring your... Right. And uh, it's a personal invite. I don't 100%. know. 100%. Right. And so to empower people, but I, th I think it's kind of like the one anotherness, though. Right. Uh, I, 100% you're right. Activities, in invitations, overnights. But I do think, like last night we had a gentleman share his testimony, unsolicited. Right. A lot of people were touched by that. It was unscripted. It was unplanned. It, it came was. from his heart. Yeah. So question is do you open that door and then fearful of what people who, mm. who are not appropriate will go on for 20 minutes you know but but there is something that's very special if you stopped a service and had people I would never do this because I know people uh, there's certain unwritten rules still in our in a, you know but to stop and say take the person next to your hand and just for the next three minutes share your prayer we do this in staff meetings and then pray for one yeah. another I mean, we did it tuesday for each mm -hmm. other i do think there's i do think there are some things we can do that breaks down the glass walls between us yeah i just i'm still trying to figure it out so to answer your question i think monday through friday we do a great job at community and unity mm -hmm. and weekends gets a little one-dimensional a little less one another yeah I, yeah, I don't know if you can break that barrier because Maybe of not. the nature of the the meeting, right? Yeah, and that's why I think that the you know the big activity funnels into the medium activity, into yep. the smaller activity, into yep. what you hope is discipleship or accountability, and that's where things. And then, and then the testimony, uh, you know, which is going to be expressed of what Jesus is doing in my life. And I know the the deacons. We had a long conversation this morning about you know reading that situation last night where mm -hmm. here's a brother precious getting up and sharing and uh, it was interesting because it's out of the box it's not what we prescribe necessarily it's not our culture by way of church gathering and so I had a lady today beautiful lady come to me been single for 15 years her kids have moved out and she said to me I was struck Bill by your neighborhood bar story I left the bar for the but for the last three years, because I'm single and my married couples are somewhat uncomfortable with me as a single woman in their group, there's okay. a degree of uncomfortableness yes, there. Right. And I can't find any singles. I'm going to the bar on Sunday afternoons and singing karaoke because it's the only place that I can have fellowship. Now that's her perception, but she was very genuine. And I and I said, "Let's. I got some ladies that you'll love, and we'll connect you." But I do think week after week of coming to church, from her car to the church and back to her car, she doesn't experience anything that God, I think, wants the church to be, at least in that environment, to what she experiences in the bar when she can go, and mingle. Yeah. and interact. I think maybe the word interact is a key. I don't think we're interactive enough, okay. and I, I got to figure that out. We could dive in on that That'd one. That'd be a hard I, one. I, right. Yeah. I, uh, okay, so uh, last question, and uh, because of time, quote, uh, and this is from last night, and I don't remember if you remember the context, but that's okay. We can't be right with God and be wrong with other people. That's a big statement. Big statement. Where? I mean... Okay, so here's where it goes. I, I go to two places real quick in Scripture. Yeah. I didn't do it this morning. I did it last night. You did? On Matthew 5. There was that, and there was another one, too. Yeah. But when you... So when Jesus says, when you go to the altar, 
to give a gift yeah. and there's something estranged, mm -hmm. leave the gift and go to talk to your brother. Take care, yeah. Take care of business. Reconciled. reconciled. Reconciliation. First John says, how can you say that you love God that you haven't seen when you don't love your brother who you have seen? Uh, you know, you just go over on and on and on. So I do think we tend to, in our privatized Christian life, that yeah. I can be right with God and bitter at an ex yeah. and angry with this and all of that. And I kind of go... I, 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 I understand why you think that. I think the Christian life is more holistic and more reconcilable. The, the language is actually pretty rough. It is. Yeah, it is. I was being soft. You, but go, yeah. yeah. Because First John chapter 3, I was reading that last night, and then today I was kind of geeking out on it um, in the back. It says, um, uh, because we love, okay, um, anyone who does not love remains in death. That's, unpack that one. Well, go goes ahead. on. No, go ahead. Anyone who hates his brother uh, remain, uh, is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Bill, that's that's rough language because Jesus says, "Hey, if you're getting up and saying raka to your neighbor, you're killing them." Right. Right. But then it seeps into our hearts that we are okay and justified to be offended and to be unforgiving and un unloving. And so then you have this language come along. Yeah. And so it's pretty rough. It's I, not. Uh, I, yeah. I'll let people struggle with it, I, and I'll let them figure that out. Here's my response. I think when God gives us a new nature, a new heart, a new mind, um, it will do things through us. And if those things are not happening, I think what John is saying is you need to go back to your heart, you need to go to Nicodemus and say, am I born again? because a born-again believer will, out of his nat new nature, right. do things he would have never done before. Not person, perfect, yes. but do things. And so I, I so think So the Holy John, Spirit should be contending with our spirits. If we're unforgiving, if we're unloving, we, uh, there should be a tension. I would hope there's tension. Th right, because if there is no tension, then you would go, well, are we even... Because I don't where think... Where are we at? Because, here, I mean, it's so beautiful. It's so... we woven into the scriptures i think when someone says i will never forgive them right i say in my heart yeah. not out loud okay i don't know if you've been forgiven i don't know if you yeah. understand what your forgiveness is yeah because to the degree that you understand it now, to why the don't degree, you ask him that or i mean i know you do with some people right oh i do i do it with everybody Right, but you, I, I thought, you know, you said, I say to my heart, I don't well, say Well, what I mean to the, yes. But, but I do say to people one-on-one, -on -one, let yeah, me put it in right. a con okay, I go, yeah, yeah. Tell, me, tell me about your forgiveness of God. Yeah. Because it sounds pretty shallow. Yeah. Because you, I mean, it's the parable of Jesus. Yeah. You owe a trillion dollars and you're going to throw somebody in the jail for 20 bucks. I don't think you know mm -hmm. that you've been forgiven a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience, when mm -hmm. I grasp my forgiveness, mm -hmm. right. it is much easier out of practicality to forgive. There's a lot. I mean, there, I mean that's really uh, the essence, the beauty of Colossians 3 and other passages as well. Well, it's grace. When I've been grace, yeah. how can I not grace? Yeah. When I'm loved, how can I not love? I, I mean, and, all... if we're forgiving and if we are loving, what a what a joyful skip to our step or the outlook of a day. But to the right. degree I'm not, right, is the degree that I ah sunny day, but I see some clouds out there. By God, you know, it's, it just cl it just clouds our perspective right. and analysis of our surroundings. Which is why I think. In uh, 10, he talks about the renewal or the renovation mm. of our hearts in the knowledge, not yeah. just information, right. but the deep emotional intimacy. experience of intimacy with yeah. him. And I, my Savior mm. forgives me, loves me, mm. graces me, walks with me. 
how can I do no other? Yeah. I mean, it, it really is a call to where are you at with Jesus? Yes. I mean, and where are you at in an experiencing knowledge? Yeah. Not knowing, not knowing about intimacy of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then that's a that's that's the expression of being, not doing, but being. The Colossians. Right. Would you say that? Yeah. So yeah. I think I'm trying. I've been trying. I think God's trying to move us from our heads, mm -hmm. cognitive information, to heart, emotional information, yeah. or cognitive knowledge mm. and emotional knowledge. I think the whole point is that our minds do see, our minds do think. Yeah. Our mind, and, and so He's trying to renovate our hearts and I think we're our worst enemies in in not having done what scripture has called us to do hmm. in in our faith journey because no one told us you know what just be still yeah and I, I dwell tell you, on forgiveness uh, and yes. the list goes on well and uh, I've been talking with brothers about this that in the memorization of Colossians 3 I can't tell you how many times in the course of my day or my week where because of an attitude or a thought or whatever, the Holy Spirit reminds me of what I've been memorizing and it right. brings it and I go, oh, short leash. Yeah. Right? Because I know the verse. It's and exactly the Holy it, says, right. Hey, remember that, Bob. Right. And and when you, you know, memorize eleven and and understand the four groupings of pair and you're reminded when you want to create a tribe within the church as opposed to the church as a whole, mm -hmm. as a holy nation, a holy temple, right. a holy priesthood, yep. a holy family, then then the short lease is I I need to embrace anybody and everybody in this room for Christ is in them and Christ is overall. I mean that's that's when dwelling creates the short list or leash. Good stuff. Any idea where we're going next week? The seven. Okay. Each of the seven. And yeah. then we're going to go to love the following week. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Yeah. Then we're going to go to scripture. Mm -hmm. Learning to dwell on scripture, not mm -hmm. just study scripture. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, hold on. What about letting peace? I mean, that's a... And peace. I mean, I'm that's... I'm sorry. Yes, let, peace is there. The word let always gets me. Let. Let. Well, just take a study of peace in the New yes. Testament as a big study. Okay, folks, if you haven't been able to join us on these, uh, I mean, it's, it really is a glorious journey through Colossians and uh, so thankful that we're here because I, I do believe that it's changing a lot of hearts. And so if you can join us, that would be wonderful and I uh, would love to fellowship with you. And so, Bill, looking forward to next weekend and, uh, and the weekend uh, thereafter, Lord willing. And uh, so... Are you going to, before you pray, are you going to go to Costco and pick up the bandages for next week? <laughs> bulk. Any yeah, bulk. The bulk. Yeah, the the 1,000 box thing of Costco bandages. We should have those at the door. I, think. I, was, the, I was seriously tempted to stop at Walgreens and buy, buy a bunch of bandages. You see them up there? Who, who needs... Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So. Right. All right. You want to pray this? No, in? you do. Ah, <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank you that it is not empty words uh, on a piece of paper, and that you reveal yourself readily, wholeheartedly, and um, skillfully as we seek you in, in the scriptures, as we pray, as we hang out with you, that there is a little bit of your nature that's uh, brought into our hearts that transforms us, makes us more like you, Jesus, so that those barriers that we have in our lives, and we all do, that those barriers would be eradicated and um, or minimized, and that uh, the height in which we uh, insulate ourselves within uh, those things, that those things would dissipate, that we as believers in Christ would love one another and that we would extend that love to people around us. And so Lord, what we're asking is that your nature become our nature hmm. and that your spirit would enable us by your power, your presence to become 
the the very people that you're bidding us to come and that um, there would be change in the heart so help us to love help us to engage with one another to forgive to uh, bear with each other and so Lord Jesus uh, help us in these things we, we thank you for the living word which is touching our hearts and we pray these things in the glorious name of Jesus amen amen folks thanks for joining us Lord willing we'll see you next week